Tracy Burns in for Rebecca Diamond, Cody Willard, Eric Boland. Well done. Well thank done. you, thank you. The G550 is a brawny aircraft with an international reach. The G550 has a range of 6,750 nautical miles at Mach 0.8 and a high-speed cruise capability of Mach 0.87. With its long legs, the G550 easily links Washington, D.C. with Dubai, London with Singapore, and Tokyo with Paris. And that's not all. The Gulfstream G550 has the best overall cabin in its class with the longest cabin, largest baggage area, and the best overall cabin environment. No wonder Nancy Pelosi wants her own Air Force of Gulfstream 550s. Who wouldn't? No, that's not a real ad from Gulfstream, but it was a real pitch verbatim from their $66 million G55, I'm sorry, G550. House leadership wants three of them, but there's bipartisan agreement that the idea is a bad idea. Steve Brown is wondering where, whether anybody in Congress remembers the treatment given to the big three CEOs over the business jets. He's a former FAA official who now works for the National Business Aviation Association, a business jet lobbying group by the way steve welcome to, to happy hour um why do they need these 550 million dollar three planes i mean eight total the, eight of them is that what eight they're up total. to they're up to eight why do they need uh, to travel in such luxury i mean uh, it, would, would one of those little cessna things not do the trick well i presume congress has made their own assessment of the mission that they're actually trying to perform and while a business aircraft is not appropriate for every flight and every mission, there are times when it's critical that you utilize a business aircraft because it has the advantages of allowing flight to remote areas where there's little or no airline service. It allows you to stay in touch with the ground or your office, depending on your mission. You can discuss confidential or proprietary, in the case of government, classified or secret information while on board the flight and conduct a meeting en route. So there are so, any number of reasons why these aircraft would be appropriate. So, Steve, I mean, in all seriousness, do you think in this time of needing to find $800 billion to pay for health care, we just were, we got uh, unemployment at 10 percent, the economy's in contraction, you actually do want us to look, to sit here with a straight face and say, yeah, Congress should seriously consider appropriating the, whatever the money is for this and let's, let's write the check. Well, Congress should determine the number of aircraft that are appropriate for the number of missions that are necessary. But these are productivity tools that do allow people to save time, work en route, and be more efficient and productive, which I think is what we would want our government to be. <laughs> we get that, I think, Steve. I mean, I don't think anybody's going to deny that we need to be more efficient. I think the problem is a PR nightmare. We try, well, Cody and I travel, you know, regular, Eric travels first class. We can't get peanuts when we travel on the plane, right? But yet, these guys are traveling in brand new jets, not to mention they did come down really hard on the auto execs for using these things. I'm just thinking timing is really bad. There's got to be other jets they can use for security purposes and such when they travel overseas. Well, I can tell you that when I served in government and I flew on some of these aircraft, they were not luxurious. Uh, the way the government uh, acquires these, they're bare basic airplanes, but they do have advanced communications capability to allow them to stay in touch with the ground and conduct meetings and utilize uh, secret or classified information in their discussions. Steve, here's the problem. Yeah, you know, I'm sure you've heard of what a, a CODEL, a congressional delegation, you know what that is? Certainly. Here's where these. Here's where they're going with this. They'll take a group of their friends, right. families, oh. sometimes, and they'll fly to the Middle East and call it, you know, a, a trip that's uh, I don't know required. A it's part of the job. Trip. Yeah. And they'll spend literally millions of, of taxpayer but dollars right. doing these, co on these codels. Boehner, it's crazy. Senator Shelby and John Boehner both had trips planned overseas. And Bringing spouse, friends and spouses. Steve, I guess with the idea that, that we could actually get the return on the investment of buying eight of these 550s as well, maybe we get a little more efficient, but I'm not sure we're going to recoup the billions that it costs. 515 billion. Well, whatever, whatever the appropriate number of airplanes is, these airplanes cost less to operate than a traditional large airline aircraft. So they're more efficient for longer ranges, can go nonstop, burn less fuel and provide a service that is more efficient and more effective. Steve, Congressional committees 
uh, have to approve these trips. And so Congress has procedures for how those trips should be approved or disapproved as appropriate. Steve, thank you so much. I say they uh, they can start driving around. As long as Congress approves it, it's okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Hey, by the way, Cody, you can go on a two hundred thousand dollars trip to the Middle East. You all right with me on that? I'm, I'm, I'm approving it here. Where First class? No, G G fifty five. Even better. Senator Shelby is taking like a lot of people on a big overseas. It goes on and on and on. I know. All right, thank you so much, Steve. Out there, guys, on tap. What happens when you bring together an investing genius with a medical genius? A profitable solution to one of the mysteries Explosion. of life. What? It's like matter and antimatter. What's causing all those darn allergies?